Deliverance Revival Tabernacle Church presents The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and friends reaching souls unlimited with the gospel of Jesus Christ raising up Jesus believers throughout New England the nation, Canada and the world and now our pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. Well, praise the name of Jesus, for he's worthy to be praised. I'm Pastor Osborne. I'd like to welcome you to another edition of The Time Is Now radio and television program. It's my prayer and sincere hope that God will use this program and use us right now as an instrument to minister to your needs. And I'm certain that God is going to do just that. So I have some things I want to share with you. I have so much I need to share and so little time to share it. So uh, if, if, if you're enjoying the program, ah, if you're enjoying the program and... Uh, and God is blessed or edified and encourage you in some way, please take a moment. Why don't you take a moment? Call us. Information prayer line is on the, on the bottom of the screen. Website's on the bottom of the screen. Send us an email. Uh, give us a call. Let us know what God has done. But better yet, you can come visit us, 298 High Street in Duxbury, 10 a.m. on Sunday morning, and we'd love to have you. I want to get into this word, all right? So let's pray. Father, we come before you in the name of Jesus. I'm so grateful for all that you are and all that you do. I pray and ask your blessing upon it, and I know it is blessed because it's ordained of you, but bless it. Use this time right now, Lord, to just minister to the needs of your people. Heal, save, deliver, set free, edify, and encourage. And I thank you in advance, Lord, for what I know you're going to do. I yield, I surrender to you right now. Have your way. Whatever you want said, whatever you want done, whatever your will, let it be accomplished, let it, let it be done right now for your glory and to edify and encourage your people. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay? So now, you know, the other day, <clears throat> I was I think it was Saturday, Saturday, I believe, I was at the church sitting in my office. I had just gotten there, walked in the door, sat there, going on my computer, and then waiting for the computer to get to a point where I can log on, whatever, but turn the computer on. And as I did that, here's a word that I got. God has never failed me. God has never failed me. And and it was I wasn't thinking about anything like that. I wasn't thinking about all the blessings and things that God has done. God has never failed me. And I thought to myself, well, yo, and I said, yeah, yeah, I guess so, you know. But as I thought of it, and, and little things, I think the enemy tried to bring little things to mind, little things that I might consider, people might consider failures to my mind. But what I realized is even in those things, God gave the victory, or even in those things that I don't, under, that I don't understand, right? What I realized is God promised to make it all work together for good. What I realized is when I get to heaven, he explains the whole situation that I will then be grateful and thank him. I realize that, right? Uh, uh, but the main thing was is that I, 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 I thought about it and I said, you know, the sad thing is is that there is many people, you know, that probably can't agree with that statement. God has never failed me. They can't agree with that statement. You know, they can't, they can't make that confession. And, part, and, and the reality is this. It's not because God has ever failed them. It's only because they think he has. You know, there, there's something that's happened in their life. Someone died, things didn't work out, they lost their home, whatever. And they think they consider that a failure on God's part. But here's what I want to tell you. When you get to heaven, God told me this years ago during a home going service. And God explains to you why he allowed what he allowed or why he did what he did. He said, you're going to be grateful. And he said, not only are you going to be grateful, he said, you're going to, but you're going to thank him. And so since you're going to be grateful and you're going to, be, and you're going to thank him, he said, then what we ought to be doing is thanking him by faith right now, even in advance. Now, when I think about that, do I realize, I mean, I'm not foolish, do I realize that there are people who have gone through some things that I know in their mind, in their heart, they would say, there is absolutely no way, they might even say, there's no way in heaven, okay, that I would ever be grateful and thankful for this thing, and, and, I, and I agree. After I made that statement and I thought about it, I thought, wow, that's kind of powerful. But when I thought about it, I began to think about different things that people may have gone through that I could, that, that I could say, Lord, I said, Lord, are they, how, could they really? Could there, could there really ever be something that would cause a person to be grateful for that or this or that and then actually thank you for it? I said, oh, my God. I'm thinking, what did I just say? But, but what I realized is, no, that's what God said. God said. I don't care what you think or what I think. God said you're going to be grateful and you're going to thank him, okay? So whatever it is that God is going to tell you, I'm here to tell you in advance that But whatever it is that you think right now because of what I said, you know way there's no way in heaven, 
that you'd be grateful and thankful. Well, God said you will, and I guarantee you. Now, I heard a story of a person that lost someone uh, uh, and so on. They had a first person died, whatever the tragedy or whatever. And when, they, when God said to them, he, says, he told them, I heard someone tell the story that God told them, he says, I took them because if I didn't, they wouldn't have made it to heaven. And then the person's attitude was like, oh, okay. You know, then they understood. Other than that, they were upset. They were mad. Now, there are some people God might even tell that, and they would still be mad. Well, I don't know. But, but what happens is you will be grateful, and you're going to thank him. All right? Now, when it comes to this word, so I'm just throwing that in. It doesn't cost you anything. We'll call, that, we'll call that the little bread, the appetizer you get before the meal. How about that? Okay? So in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, 2 Thessalonians 3 and verse 1. Finally, brethren, pray for us that the word of the Lord may, may, may have free course and be glorified even as it is with you. So pray that the word of the Lord has free course. It, it, we're able to minister and preach and do all the things we need to do without being hindered and opposed and so on. Okay? And, and, and that, that the word is glorified in the same way that you glorify it and appreciate it and so on. Thankful for it, whatever. And it says, and that we may be delivered from unreasonable men, uh, un unreasonable and wicked men, that we be delivered, for all men have not faith. So he's calling the people that are hindering and opposing and preventing and doing all that stuff to prevent the gospel and, the, and, the, and from being preached and ministry from going forth. He's calling them unreasonable, wicked men. And he says, that pray that we be delivered. And he says, because all men have not faith. Okay, he says all men have not faith. But then... In Romans chapter 12, there's another verse that says God has given to every man the measure of faith. So it says here in Romans 12 and 3, For I say through the grace given unto me to every man that is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think soberly according as God hath dealt to every man the measure of faith. Now wait a minute. We just read in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3 and verse 2 that, that all men have not faith. All men have not faith. But yet here in Romans chapter 12 and verse 3, it says God has dealt to every man. Dealt. He's given to every man. It's like, it's like cards, like playing uh, 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 Uno. I use Uno. You're playing Uno and you deal out the cards. Everybody, every, everyone has been dealt faith. Every person, every human being born into this world has been given. They've been dealt. They've been given a measure of faith. Okay? But so, what, so is the Bible contradicting itself? What, what's, the, what's, the, what's the problem there? Well, when he's saying that in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, what he's saying is this. The ministry, the gospel is being hindered by unreasonable, wicked men that have not faith in Jesus Christ. Okay? It's not that they don't have faith at all. They, they, it's that they don't have faith in Jesus Christ. They may believe in some other God. They may be of some other religious whatever, group or something, religion and all like that. And so what are they doing? Because they don't believe in Jesus as the Christ, the Messiah, the, uh, the only begotten Son of God. They don't believe in His death, burial, resurrection. They don't believe He's coming back again. So what are they doing? They're hindering. They're opposing that the gospel, the good news, the, the, the message of, of, of Jesus from being preached because they don't believe in Jesus. It's not that they don't have faith because no matter what religion people are, they have faith, and it's not faith in Jesus. Even the atheist and the agnostic has faith. Now, you may be atheist or agnostic. You may have some atheist, atheist friends or whatever, and, and they may tell you, well, I don't have faith. Well, I'm sad. That, I hate to tell you. I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but you do have faith. I don't have faith to believe. You do. Because God has dealt to every person the, me the measure of faith. God has given every human being born into this world faith. He's given you the measure of faith. Well, what's the measure? Is it an ounce? You know, is it an inch? Is it, is it, is it, a, is it a cubit? You know what I mean? Yeah, whatever, right? Well, yeah. <laughs> so, so here's the thing. Well, what, how do you measure? Well, here's what I would tell you. Whatever that measure is that God has given to every man, it is enough faith to believe in God Okay, and to accept Jesus Christ as Savior, because you, if God didn't give you that, then it'd be no, no, uh, impossible for you to to be saved. And you say, well, how do you know that? Maybe He didn't give me that much, or maybe no. Oh, well, here's here's what I know. Because listen, even the atheist, you you think you don't have faith, but the atheist, the agnostic, whoever you are, you have faith. Here's the thing: you just don't, just like Second Thessalonians three, you just don't have faith in Jesus. You have faith. Your faith, the atheist, the agnostic, your faith is in Darwin. That's where your faith is. But you have faith. Your faith is in the Big Bang. Your faith is in evolution because that takes faith. Because here's the thing about Darwin, evolution, the Big Bang. All of those things are theories. It is not called Darwin's facts, Darwin's proof. People have been trying to prove Darwin's theory for years. 
scientists who are atheists, whatever, have been trying to prove the Big Bang theory because it's not called the Big Bang facts. It's called the Big Bang theory, okay? And in order to accept a theory, then you have to have faith that that theory is true, okay? If it's facts, the fact is, whoops, I just dropped it there. The fact is, it's a fact that I have a phone. It's a fact. It is a fact that I have a phone, okay? So I don't have to have faith that I have a phone. I have one. But if I didn't have a phone and you said, Pastor, I'm going to bring you a phone. Well, I don't have it, but I have to have faith that you're going to keep your word, faith that you'll bring it. But even after I get it, I don't need faith for that anymore. Well, that's what, the, that's what Darwin and, and Big Bang and, and evolution, it, those are all theories, okay? They're maybes. They're, they're perhapses. You know, there are possibilities, all right? And so in order for you to believe that and just reject the, 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 the uh, God and the possibility of God and he's the creator of the universe and, and Jesus and he's coming back again and there's a heaven and there's a hell, you know what? You, you had to have faith. You know, you could have. You God has given you free will. He gave you faith and free will to do whatever you want to do with your faith. The reason you go and walk into a restaurant or a movie theater and you don't test the seat and push it, push it to see, will this hold my weight and all that kind of stuff. You know, the reason you do things is because you have that faith is what allows you to do that, right? Because if you didn't have any faith, you, 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 you would test the chair, you test the floor. When you walk in and go from one room to the next, you put one foot out and test it to see, will this floor hold me? But no, you have faith that whoever built it knew what they were doing, they built it to code, and these floors are going to hold you, the ceiling's not going to fall in on yet, and you'll be all set, okay? So faith, you have the, but so here's the, so here's the next thing. So then why doesn't faith work for every person? Well, Hebrews chapter 4 tells us it, why in many cases faith doesn't work. First thing I'll tell you is this, faith doesn't work in many cases because people don't really have the faith that they think they have or even say they have. And they, they, get, they, they feel they're excited and they're happy and all that because they think they have faith and they really don't, okay? What many people are, have is what I call hope, okay? Well, what I'll, I'll call it hope. And what some people have is even desperate hope, but it's hope nonetheless. Hope is reasonable expectation, but faith is knowing Faith knows, and if you don't know, if you, if you can't say the thing that you're believing, I know, I know there's a heaven, I know, I know God's going to heal me, I know God's going to help me, then you know what, you're in hope. If you have reason, well, I, I, show up, I really believe that God's going to supply this need, and blah, blah, blah. I really believe that God's going to do it, you know, and I'm expecting, but, but you, no, you, got to, you have to know, because hope, and hope is great, hope is the foundation of faith. But hope has to graduate. Hope has to grow into from reasonable expectation to knowing. And when you come to knowing, here's how you'll know. When, here's how you'll know you're in a place of knowing. Here's how you'll know when you're in faith. Instead of going to uh, uh, Hebrews, I'm going to go to James first, James chapter 2. Instead, you'll know when, you're, when your hope has, has developed and grown into faith when this happens, Okay. In James chapter 2 and verse 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works? Can faith save him? Okay, hope and faith, even believing, is, is two, two, two different things. But you'll know when your believing has, has, has transitioned into faith. You'll know when your hope has grown into faith when you act on it. As long as there's no corresponding action, as long as you're not acting on it and so forth, you know what? All you are is in, you are only in hope, okay? You're, 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 you're in hope or you're just believing, okay? But it is not faith because it is believing. You can believe something you and you can believe, I really believe. You believe strong, but never act on it. But it is impossible, impossible to have faith and not have some corresponding action, some action going along with it. So here's the thing. You believe, man, I really believe. But the moment you take that believing and just mix it with some faith, with, mix it with some action, you've got faith. That believing is now transformed into faith, and you're in faith. But if you just believe, if I said the first person down into the studio, and I, let's say I had $1,000, and I, I, got the, I got the 10 $100 bills, 10, is it 10, yeah, 10 $100 bills, okay, right here, and I'm showing you, and the first person down here, Someone will say, well, I sure believe it. He seems like an honest guy. I've seen him, and he just looks honest. Hopefully I do. You know, like, and I think oh, if I went down there, and man, I sure need that money. I could sure use that $1,000, and I believe he's going to do that. I believe. 
Well, you know, you'll believe it, but you'll sit there watching and you need it. But the person that has faith, they're going to grab their scooter, their, their, their rollerblades, whatever, right? Their, their, their best running shoes, and they're trying to get here as fast as possible. They want to be first. They're going to run through red lights. Please, do, hopefully you would do that. But they're going to do some things, you know, to, to get that money. And the difference is one person believed and one person had faith. You see, faith knows. Faith is on a level of knowing, all right? But now, so now let's go back. Cause, and then not only that, let's see here. In the 17th verse, it says of, of James 2, even so faith, if it has not works, is dead being alone. All right? Uh, uh, for as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. There's the, the, the word faith and the word believe. I'm going to go to Hebrews chapter 4, try to get this done and wrap this up. Hebrews chapter 4. The word faith and the word believe in, in most places in the, in the Gospels is translated from the same Greek word in most cases, pistos. OK, but although it's translated from the same Greek word, it's two different things. OK, even though, yeah, because I used to think faith and believing is the same thing. It's translated from the same word. Uh, no, but that's not true because you can believe and never act on what you believe. And that's all it is. Believing It's just hope. But it's impossible to say I have faith and not have action. The moment you put action to what you believe, it's faith. Now, Hebrews chapter four. I have a few minutes here. Let me wrap this up. Verse one. Why is it that some people have faith and never see any miracles, any kind of anything, never, never, never a, a benefit from it and so on? Well, why is that? Well, Hebrews chapter 4 tells us why, okay? It says in Hebrews 4 and verse 1, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left us of enter ending his re entering into his rest, any of you should come short of it, okay? You know, there is a rest for the believers. There's, there's a, there is a peace. There, there is a peace and there is a rest and there's a worry-free, anxiety-free, stress-free life that God has made available to believers. And you know how you, how, who receives that? You know how you receive that? By trusting God, by having faith and trusting God, having faith in his word, trusting God that he's going to do what he says. And when you have faith and you trust God and you believe his word and whatever, you can enter. You will enter into that rest, okay? Because the reason that the children of Israel and people didn't enter into that rest is because the Bible tells us they, they did not enter into that rest because of unbelief, all right? Now, so it says here, verse 2, it says, For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them. So everybody in those days, everybody, people today, have heard the gospel, the good news, the word of God, and all like that. And so, but why doesn't it benefit you? Why aren't you prospering? Why, why isn't it profiting you and so on? Well, it's because it says, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. So everybody's received the gospel, the good news. They know the word, whatever, healing, salvation, miracles, whatever, prosperity, like that. Why does, it, why does it profit some people and not others? Because everyone does not mix it with faith. God gives you the word. You receive it. It's your job to receive it and mix it. The mix is your part. It's in, it's in the, matter of fact, I preached this word years ago. I might look it up and see when it was, but there's a message on YouTube called It's in the Mix. Okay, it's a, and, and what happened, so the word has to be mixed with faith, all right? Now, so they heard the good news, they heard it, you know, God gave them a word while they were in the wilderness about the promised land like that, and when the spies went out, 12 spies, 10 of them came back with an evil report. The Amalekites are there, the giants are there, you know, we're, we're like grasshoppers in their sight, you know, that, they came back with that word. Be, but God told them, the land is yours, I'm giving it to you. Caleb and Joshua said, we're well able. They said, the people are bread for us, right? If you read that in the book of Numbers and so on. So they said, the people are bread. But here's, so here's what happened. You had two men who took the word of God, all right? And, and in spite of the giants and the Amalekites and all these things and whatever, all right, they mixed that word with faith and they're ready. Let's go at once. Let's go get it. It's ours. Whereas the other 10 men received the word and didn't mix it with faith. That's the only difference. So now, let me give you this as well. So I don't know if I have time to read it to you, but in Mark chapter 10, there's this young man called the rich young ruler, and, and he wants eternal life. And Jesus says to him, go sell everything you have, give it to the poor, take up your cross and follow me. Well, the reason he says that is because he says there's one thing you lack. He keeps the commandments and everything, but there's one thing. What's the one thing he lacks? He doesn't trust in God. He trusts in his riches. So God is going to fix that problem by having him sell everything he has, give it to the poor. The problem solved. Now you have to trust God, right? And he went away sad and grieved because of that, what Jesus wanted. Well, that's the gospel. That's the good news. That is the word that God is giving him to, get, to, to cause him to get what he wants, eternal life. 
But instead of mixing faith with it, I don't understand. I'm going to be, geez, God wants to be broke. I'm going to be broke. I'll be poor. What am I going to do? He should have mixed it with faith. If he would have, he would have gotten eternal life, but even, even more. So listen to what it says here. But because he didn't mix it with faith, that word didn't prof profit him at all. So in verse 28, then Peter began to say unto him, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. Peter hears what Jesus says to, 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 the, to the rich young ruler. And he says, we did that. We left everything to follow you. And Jesus said, Jesus answered him and says, Verily I say unto you, there is no man that hath left house or brethren or sister or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake in the Gospels, but he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time houses and brethren and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecution because there's always going to be persecution in this world and in the world to come eternal and in the world to come eternal life if he would have just had faith he does I, I know he didn't understand why would god want me to sell everything why would i don't he's thinking i don't want to be broke i don't want to be in poverty i don't want to be homeless you know sell everything you have i don't want to be in homeless i don't want to sell my camels right or whatever i don't you know i, I don't want to you know sell it and go f and take up a cross and follow you cross represents death persecution and so on afflictions right I, I, and and you know cuz he trusts in his riches remember okay maybe if he didn't trust in his riches it would have been easier but because of that you know he's sad but if he just could have just mixed that word, it's a word. That's the gospel. What does the man want? Eternal life. How do you get eternal life? The gospel. The gospel is what brings you eternal life, the good news, right? But he's, he's grieved. He's sad. Doesn't do it. But the worst thing, if he would have mixed it with faith, if he could have had faith in that word that Jesus gave him to, to produce the eternal life that he wanted, right? Here's what would have happened. Jesus says, no man who does that will, 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 will go without receiving it all back 100-fold. So he would have gotten eternal life and everything he gave up, he would have gotten it back a hundredfold. So if he had a million dollars and a, and a nice house, he, he would have, that would have been multiplied to at least a hundred million and whatever else, okay? So we wouldn't call him today the rich young ruler. We'd call him the rich, 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 rich young ruler, okay? Because God, he says in 3 John 2, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper, 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 and be in health and so on. God wants you to prosper, okay? God doesn't want you broke. So now, you know, right now I've said some things. I got I to wrap this up. And maybe God has been dealing with you about salvation. God has been dealing with you about the fact that he's real, that he exists, that Jesus is his only begotten son, that he died for you. He shed his blood so that you could be saved, that he's, that he's soon to come. The rapture could take place at any moment. And you realize it's perilous times. It's a sign of the times. And you want to be saved. Well, here's an opportunity to mix that gospel, the good news, with, with some faith and confess and, and make Jesus your Savior and Lord. So say this with me right now. Dear God, I come to you in the name of Jesus. I confess that I'm a sinner and I need to be saved. I believe Jesus is your only begotten son. I believe he came. I believe he died. I believe you raised him on the third day. And I believe he's coming back again. So I ask you to forgive me of all of my sin. Come into my heart. Fill me with your spirit. Baptize me in your Holy Ghost with a manifestation of all the gifts and the fruit of the Spirit. And I thank you for saving me in Jesus' name. Amen. So if you said that prayer, I know I said it kind of fast, but I'm running out of time. You're, you're saved. You're born again. You're on your way to heaven. And listen, if I don't see you in time, I'd love to see you in eternity. All right? So you're saved now, and I'll see you in eternity. God, I know God's going to help me to do that. But I'm so excited for you. Here's what I would suggest that you do. Go find a church around the corner, down the way. Maybe you can't get to Duxbury, 298 High Street on 10 o'clock on Sunday morning, but you have a church that you can walk to, you can skate to, you can ride your bike to, right? You can, you can, uh, you can uh, what's it, breaststroke to, whatever, I don't know, right? You can, whatever, you can get there. Find a church that you, and, and, and go there, let them teach you the word, grow in the things of God and so on, and that's great. And Father, I pray for the sick, the suffering, the afflicted, uh, and I just speak a word of healing. I send a word of healing to them now. In Jesus' name, amen. So now listen, I wish I had more time, but I have to go. We, and, and I appreciate you being here with me for this time, all right? But let me remind you, Jesus Christ came that you might have life, that you might have it more abundantly. So stop dying and live, live, live. Thank you for tuning in to The Time Is Now with Pastor E.I. Osborne Jr. and Friends. We pray that this message has been a blessing to you. If you would like some information on anything you heard in today's episode, or to find out how you can have a relationship with Jesus Christ, please call us at 
746-4085. If you would like a copy of this message, further information about our ministry, or to make a donation, please visit our website at www.eiosborne.org or correspond by mail at the time is now. P.O. Box 3642, Plymouth, Massachusetts, 02361. On behalf of the ministry, thank you.